Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Fueling the Love of Chef at Adobe. My name is Nathan Harvey, and I'll be your host today. I'm the Vice President of Community Development here at Chef, and I'm really excited to be part of this discussion today. I'm pleased to introduce you to today's panel of speakers from Chef and Adobe. Naomi Watnick is a co customer account manager at Chef, working with the Adobe team. Kyler Fitch, also from Chef, is a customer engineer, and, and he actually worked at Adobe before joining Chef. And on the Adobe side, we, ha we have Jeremy Lee, who's a senior web technologist using Chef within the IT group, and Manny Toledo, a DevOps engineer working on a non working on non-IT engineering team. I have a couple of quick housekeeping items that I'd like to cover before we get started. Today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session, accessible through the same link you're using right now. We'd also love to hear from you during today's presentation. We'll be answering questions throughout the session, so please feel free to send those along to us using the Ask a Question tab on the top of your screen. And again, for those of you just joining us, welcome to today's session, Fueling the Love of Chefs at Adobe. My name is Nathan Harvey. I'd like to start us off with an introduction to some of our, uh, my fellow panelists here. So I'd like to start with Naomi Watnick. Naomi, thank you for joining. I wonder if you could introduce yourself and talk about why you're excited about this particular topic. Thanks, Nathan. Um, well, I'm the customer account manager uh, for Chefs, and I've been working with Adobe since um, early last year, 2015, and it's been great getting to work with the different groups within Adobe, and one thing is for sure, I was always impressed and still am impressed by the community that they have within um, Adobe, especially since they have so many distributed teams um, across the nation and overseas. So I thought it would be great to share some of that information, how they got started, and what they're doing with um, the rest of the Chef community. And so, therefore, here we are at the webinar. All right, great. We're glad to have you, Naomi. Uh, Tyler, good morning. Can you uh, give us a little bit of your background as well? Sure. So, um, as you mentioned, Nathan, I worked at Adobe for uh, close to a decade there, um, building web applications and on the e-commerce team. And last role I had was kind of automating all the things as a build and release engineer. And what I found was, I wanted to use Chef, and there were other people using Chef, but it's a over 10,000-person company, and how did I track down my peers? Uh, we had internal meetings, and that was a great thing, but we actually got together in person um, early 2014, 2014, and that's when I actually got to meet Manny in person for the first time, and these things, that, the stuff we're talking about now is rooted all the way back there. So as we go through this, remember it's... Uh, it can take a while, depending on the size of your group, but uh, getting everybody together who cares, shares these common interests is a, a great thing, and uh, you get productivity gains for everybody because you won't be reinventing the wheel of how do I deal with my company's proxy when somebody else has already figured it out for you for that tool. Things like that are um, great uh, to learn from your peers as opposed to external people telling you how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Tyler. We're really glad to have you with us for our discussion today. So, Jeremy, uh, you're with Adobe. I wonder if you could just give me a quick uh, introduction to sort of uh, where you sit within the Adobe organization, maybe how the how the organization is laid out, as well as introduce yourself. Sure. So, I'm Jeremy. I work on the web operations team um, in Adobe IT. Uh, we're the team that maintains the front end dub 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 site. Um, a lot of the systems which handle e-commerce. Um, actually, before Tyler left Adobe, um, he was on the development side of all of that, and I was on the operations side. So he would, you know, be writing code that we would then be trying to deploy and dealing with the, you know, build and release systems, the artifacts that are coming out of his uh, process. We started using Chef a little over um, two years ago, and... Um, you know, so I've been I've been kind of taking the lead. I have been taking the lead on you know with that on the web operations team of trying to drive our adoption of um, Chef and push us in the direction of trying to be a little bit more uh, DevOps and a little more automated and you know moving us away from the old 
patterns that we used to use with uh, IT operations work. That's awesome. And Manny, would you mind just introducing yourself and uh, give us a little bit of your background as well? That'd be awesome. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm Manny. I've been at Adobe now for almost three years. Um, I'm specifically embedded in the product team, uh, working on Behance.net and Adobe Portfolio. Uh, I have basically been doing what most people consider DevOps work uh, since I started here, uh, the goal being to you know, automate deployments, automate infrastructure, and I basically started on Chef within three months of starting here. Um, and, it, and we went from like a physical data center to more cloud-based uh, solutions. And we really wanted to have the same results everywhere. Uh, and we were able to get there with Chef. Um, and you know, after meeting Tyler and, and Jeremy, I think I met them both in 2014, I saw that many, many other teams were trying to do the same thing, just get hands off, automate as much as possible, uh, and really saw an opportunity to connect people. Uh, in in the time since then, we've been able to actually like take advantage of every medium Adobe offers and, and every face-to-face -face we've had to really connect and share some ideas on, on not only how to build a community, but how we use Chef and how to get processes flowing smoothly. Um, it's been a pretty good experience overall. Yeah, that's awesome. I love how um, you've both uh, kind of talked about this idea that what we want to do is automate everything and sort of pull humans and pull manual labor out of the work. But when we're being honest, uh, we have to, the, way, the best way to automate, one of the best ways to automate and really see success with that is to actually bring the humans together and build a community around this. So I know at Adobe, um, you kind of, um, you, you have a pretty strong uh, sense of community around automation, around DevOps, around Chef. Uh, I understand you call it a guild. Maybe you could give us a little bit of history around the guild and, and sort of how that works. That would be great. Yeah, I can get into that. Um, the guild really come, came from uh, a conference that we have every other year. Uh, it's basically uh, called Adobe Tech Summit. It's in uh, San Francisco every other year. And in 2015, uh, it was decided that we were going to take this idea of guilds, which was popularized by Spotify, and centralize or at least collect people around technologies or skills that they were working at. So we had language-specific uh, guilds pop up, uh, conversations around you know, front-end development, things like that. Uh, and knowing that this was going to happen officially at Tech Summit 2015, I took advantage and kind of started gathering people and, and rallying people together to have a mini-summit at the end of it, where we could sit down all together face-to-face -to -face and do a full day of, of figuring out how do we build a chef guild, how do we keep communication going, and how do we keep uh, best practices. Um, most of the people, most of their guilds did follow something similar, but I think we really made sure that voices were heard and we kind of wanted people to feel that they could speak freely about you know, the problems they've had with automation, the problems they've had with just getting Chef to work for them. And uh, we actually had a lot of support from Chef directly. We had speakers. We had uh, people there who really knew Chef in depth to answer questions. Um, and that was kind of the kickoff of the guild, just having this face-to-face this -face time. Uh, and I think that really made a big difference because now we had names and faces and we could identify each other even in this massive organization, and uh, we kind of put together a list of everybody who sh showed up that day and published it online uh, pretty much by the end of the week so that everybody could track each other down afterwards. Cool. So it sounds like you used uh, a sort of a, a large company gathering and then pulled out the people that were specifically interested in chefs to help form this guild. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we tried to leverage. Uh, we knew everybody were going to be were going to be in the same place at the same time for once, so we wanted to take advantage of that. Yeah, that's really cool um, because you do have that opportunity um, to to put everyone in the same room. Frankly, with large distributed custom uh, companies, it's not always easy to have everyone together in the same location. So it's cool that you were able to do that. I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about sort of the structure of the guild. Is there like 
a guild master, what sort of tools do you use to keep things uh, keep things moving and keep keep the guild, you know, how often do you meet, things like that. Yeah, um, so I'm the guild master. Uh, generally, I've tried not to make anything too formal, uh, but what I try to do is connect people to the knowledge they, they need. Um, and a lot of that has been, you know, work things out with uh, different groups here and, and how our relationship with with Chef can help them uh, and just having a body of knowledge around that and knowing where to direct people. Uh, then I've kind of made sure that we have a more administrative meeting with Chef every week to kind of see what's going on, what tickets are open, what are the problems that people are facing today. And we also have a regular cookbook office hours uh, and we have those every week, whether people show up or not, uh, just so that people have the opportunity to pop in, ask a question, and leave if they want to. Um, but someone's there to at least start fielding questions. Uh, we we also took advantage of the usual old-fashioned means of communication, which is uh, distribution lists. Every company has it. Adobe's used them for pretty much everything. Uh, so we basically created a new Guild, uh, wait, DL. wait, Manny, Manny, I have to, uh, sorry, I have to introduce you. Distribution lists? Are those yeah. in Slack? <laughs> yeah, right? No, <laughs> we, we did use Slack. But we started, we started with the old way and moved forward. Yeah. Like email, email, huh? How, yeah, yeah. Uh, how revolutionary. It's awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, um, I'm, I'm very redundant. I will do things in Slack and then share it in email and then, put it into like the wiki and wherever else I can um, just because I try to cover all my bases. But uh, we, we have been urging everybody to get into a Slack channel that we share throughout the company. Um, and it's one Slack channel. Uh, it's basically as public as you can. It's invite only uh, just because Slack doesn't allow you to totally open up something to just one group. Um, but we basically allow anybody in who asks for, for access to the chef Slack chat. Um, and that, we like that, but it's not as active as I'd like. Uh, that's why I, I do embrace email as much as I do. Um, also, I want to say, as far as Manny leading the guild, this is Tyler, that um, he doesn't take on the responsibility of answering everybody's questions. He just makes sure that people know where to um, bring their questions and rely upon their peers, or as he's talking about some of the meetings where uh, I come in from the chef's side as the vendor and bring technical expertise. He, yeah, it, being a guild leader does not mean that you are answering everything or you're the expert. You're simply the person willing to coordinate a meeting and have people show up and have a place to talk, but you don't have to have all the answers. Um, rely upon your peers. You can't be an expert in all things Adobe Chef usage, uh, um, and definitely as you go to your company outside of this um, the meeting, think about that. Like if you're willing to host a meeting once a month or once every two weeks or even weekly if you're really active, that's what you need to do as the guild leader. You don't need to be the expert in the tool. You just got to be a, a great facilitator. Yeah, that is absolutely true, and I just want to. Uh, reinforce the fact that I am not 100% engaged in this all the time. This is maybe 2% of, of my overall workload. And thanks to people like Tyler fielding a lot of these questions. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Jeremy, do you participate in the guilds? I do. I, I show up to the uh, weekly office hours and the uh, weekly meetings. Um, and you know, answer what questions we, we can. Um, you know, overall, there, 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 there's a little less activity around that than, than I think would be, you know, great. But it, it is, you know, it is a, it is a problem with the, with the distributed teams. And I think, you know, there is a, there is a little bit of an issue with individual teams that may be using Chef don't necessarily think in a broader context of, you know, someone may have done something remarkably similar to uh, what I'm trying to do. So they kind of show up when they have a problem. They don't necessarily show up when they, you know, just want to give some information. And I think some of that has to do with people just having the, the uh, spare time to, to, you know, to do that. Um, getting that time is hard. 
Sure. And how about uh, folks that you have that are, you know, I, I think one of the ways to, to help people come back to these meetings is not only to help them answer their questions, but to encourage them to uh, feed, feed their knowledge and feed their information and help back to their peers. So do you do things to encourage that to happen, or, or does that just sort of happen naturally? That doesn't, um, doesn't happen as much. Um, within my, my own team, um, I actually have a we, we have a, a, a weekly meeting um, which we've modeled after um, the airing of grievances in Festivus, where people can show up and complain about something that's not quite working right. You know whether it's a bug in you know one of our cookbooks or a bug in one of our processes that we've tried to adapt. You know something that's making things a little rougher than it ought to to be. So so we'll get together and talk through through those things and you know try to come to a you know, come to an answer on, you know, well, how do we address this move, moving for, for, forward? So we have that kind of feedback. But overall, you know, with the with cookbook office hours, people kind of show up, get their questions answered, and, you know, that's about it. And it would be really, really nice to be able to drive people back and or, you know, find a way to bring people in and, and just continue those conversations constantly. I mean, I, I show up because... One of the reasons is I like the company, and we get some really good, you know, kind of ad hoc uh, communication around that, things that we didn't really plan. Um, you know, we just start talking about and, you know, get some good some good ideas out, out of that. Cool. So another tip, uh, that, you know, actually a thing that you mentioned was uh, bringing together uh, – a tech day or something within the conference. I know that you have an engineering conference that happens internally at Adobe on a regular basis. Uh, I wonder if you could speak to some of the things that you're doing there. Um, so the tech conference is every other year. Uh, it's actually interesting because it kind of moves with the way our, our company is moving. Um, We've gone from a packaged product company to now a more cloud-based company. And you can kind of watch the, the presentations kind of roll with the changes of the company. Um, and it's great for, for large-scale stuff, but really it's, it's the hallway track of this conference that makes a big difference because everybody shows up. Guys that I work with from India are there, uh, and it's the first time I meet them sometimes. Um, and you spend more time talking to these people and, and – kind of stepping aside uh, from all, all the formal presentations to dig into what they're working on, their latest research, or just sharing uh, war stories in trying to automate things or improve infrastructure. Um, and it's, it's good. It's still very rare since it is something that's every other year. Uh, but what does stem from that is that we can keep regular communication going and regular tech talks going even if they are all virtual. Um, but you have these moments of face-to-face -face time to actually take advantage of, and I, I really hope most people do. Uh, on our end, we try to just publish as much as we can uh, regarding Chef and all the, all the meetings we have, we try to record and put up online. I think that's a pretty strong habit throughout Adobe, no matter what you're working on. Uh, a lot of the meetings are recorded. Uh, we have... Uh, we use Adobe uh, Connect, and basically that allows you to just record meetings, and every meeting happens in it. So most people are just in the habit of sharing out that, that recorded meeting. So if you want to, you can just see what happens. You can watch the ad hoc conversation after the fact and still participate. That's cool. We do see this uh, with a number of other customers as well, where they'll bring together technology teams and do things like share the work that they're working on, do a bunch of demos, and, and have those conversations. Uh, Jeremy, as you mentioned, like it's, it's great just to get together. Sometimes it feels, uh, you know, there's some, some real catharsis to just getting together and talking about the things, like airing your grievances, as you said, and, and maybe sometimes out of that you'll have uh, people that are struggling with the same things or people that have solved those problems and can help you through them. Um, but in any case, just knowing that you're not alone uh, is often very, very helpful. 
And also, so, when you have uh, a large group come together, um, you can you have power then to bring in speakers. Uh, as they're talking about the tech days, uh, when they had all of Adobe in one spot and all the Adobe Chef people, and they came to Chef and said, "We'd like speakers." We responded with like four or five people, uh, all the way up to Adam Jacob, our CTO and co-founder, who is willing to show up and talk to an engaged community like that. Um, so when you have your company tech days and you say, we're focused on Chef, we'll probably be able to help you. Or if you're focused on using Jenkins or you're focused on using GitHub, at whatever people from those companies will send somebody to you to engage a large audience. And it's a lot easier to have um, to pull those in and say, like, everybody's going to be there. Uh, we want to focus on building this automation tool and, and using it. Uh, People are definitely receptive to uh, helping the customers who are being that proactive in the direction they're taking their work. Yeah, and I know that Chef is always happy uh, to support our customers and, and dr help drive success however we can. And our, you know, when schedules allow, certainly can come in and, and provide some guest speaking opportunities. Another thing, um, you know, as we talk about community and especially building an internal community, one of the things that I find uh, that helps uh, build an internal community is actually to go and participate in the local external community. So maybe go to meetup groups that are happening locally in your city or something like that. Maybe even host a meetup group. But um, I find that when you're at a meetup group, it's always good to go sort of with a plan or some goals. Sure, you're there to learn and to meet other people, uh, but I also find that it's really nice to go and find a person or two in the local area that you might invite back to your office for maybe a lunch and learn, uh, to have them come speak as a guest speaker at uh, an internal conference or an internal meeting or something like that. Cool. So we talked a little bit about getting external speakers. How about, uh, you know, you've got, you've got Chef. Chef is a, a very powerful technology. It also takes a minute to learn how to use Chef. So what, what are some of the things that you're doing to help onboard new engineers, folks that are new to Chef, and get them sort of understanding how Chef works within Adobe? From the Guild perspective, uh, one of the first things we did was collect all the presentations we could from uh, our first summit, and then all the learning resources that Chef made available at the time and put it into our wiki and had basically like a welcome to Chef intro section uh, prominently displayed just so that we could guide anybody who asked us there first, have them go through it, and then come back to us with questions and kind of help them along. And I know you've brought in uh, Chef for, uh, to help deliver some training as well, right? Yeah, we, um, we've basically gone to public training, uh, we've done some private training, but, uh, pretty much every, every avenue we could find that we could afford, we've tried to send different people to. Um, mm -hmm. On my team, we kind of do a pairing approach to, to Learning Chef, uh, so right now we have a new hire and he's sitting next to me. and. Basically, I'm there to just help him along and guide him through his journey. And right now, he's deep in, in writing, in writing a chef spec test. So I've been there kind of helping him solve problems, understand what's going on, not only in the infrastructure, but also just in the logic of the cookbooks and, and how to make them clean and pretty reusable. On the on yeah, the that I, Sorry, go ahead, Jeremy. On the well, on the on the web ops side, we've you know we've we've done um, we did some uh, uh, private training um, inside uh, that was a couple of year, years ago, but I've also conducted uh, training sessions just for the members of our team to get them up to speed on the changes in our processes, um, how to put cookbooks to, together. Um, the weekly meeting on airing of grievances helps because they can bring their problems to uh, to that meet, meeting. Um, when we did do massive roll, rollouts, I also held um, office hours. Just, I'm available at this time, show up, 
We'll answer any questions that you have, make sure that you're on the right track. Demo days have helped as well. One tool that is uh, phenomenal for helping people learn Chef, you know, it gives them a real good hands-on um, contextual view of how Chef works is Test Kitchen. I demoed that to my team last week, and I'm, all, and I'm already getting some uh, questions from people about making sure their system is set up uh, correctly. And given that Test Kitchen is so easy to, you know, fire off once everything is set up, that's usually the last question that, that I get, and they're often, you know, playing with things, and they're able to really get their hands into something that they're familiar with instead of just a training exercise that gives them a very abstract sense of how everything works. You know, the contextual learning is really, really good. Yeah, that's that's definitely the case. You know, we, we see this all the time when we're out there helping folks learn chef. It's very easy uh, for chef, the company, and our instructors to help people understand the fundamentals and sort of the essentials of chef and, and start with the very low-level resources and how things all fit together. But what, what chef can't be um, is an expert on everyone's applications, everyone's infrastructure. In fact, that's, you know, that's kind of the nature of the business that we're in, and it's why chef was built as an open-source framework, and it truly is a framework that allows you to model those things. Uh, so in a classroom setting, it's very easy to, to um to learn Chef because you're guided through labs that are, you know, pre-built. We have, we know exactly which steps you need to take and can kind of hold your hand through that. But then as you go back to your cube or back to your office and need to automate your own things, that's where things start to get a little bit tricky. So having a, a group of peers around you that can help with things like, you know, I understand how this application works or I, I've been through those same challenges in this environment. That can be um really, really beneficial. Great. So uh, let's talk about sharing sharing the knowledge that you that you have across chefs. This is this is always a problem in um, you know how do you how do you make sure that you uh, as you learn things, how do you get that information published out and how do you uh, put it in places that's actually consumable by folks that, where they can easily find it and things like that. So I wonder if you could walk us through some of the, the tools and the process that you use to share knowledge uh, around the company. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times already, but uh, definitely the wiki, and we try to make that the one persistent source of truth. Uh, so, and a lot of things happen in Slack. A lot of things go out in email. Um, but if there's anything that we think is useful for someone else, we try to bring it back to the wiki so that there's always one place for them to go and people get in the habit of looking there first, um, even as far as finding out who to, to who to ask questions. We'll try to, to list out everybody who's in the guild, uh, what teams they're on, information like that, so that they can be discovered and essentially contacted directly if someone thinks that's the best route. The other thing, too, is... Um, all the meetings on the cookbook office hours are recorded and then published back to the wiki. So that anybody can go back and look at what was discussed and what's going on. And I think that's that's important because I think Jeremy said before there's a lot of ad hoc conversations that happen there and just being able to kind of go back and, and share with people even after the fact helps people feel like they're part of the community and helps them feel like they kind of know what's going on. Yeah, and you have a widely distributed team there at Adobe. I mean, uh, you mentioned that you get together every other year. Uh, it's hard to build bonds uh, if what you do is communicate with one another once every two years. So uh, I think you mentioned you mentioned Slack as one of the tools that you use. We actually have a question from the audience around how do you use Slack and deal with auditors, um, and, and then they also wanted to know if you use uh, a paid Slack or if you're just on the free version. Okay. So there's no enterprise Slack right now, but it's something that I think everybody wants here, um, and I think it's something we're moving towards. Uh, but what we have done is there's been one group that uh, is paying for it, and they've given us a room there. And in Slack, you can invite an unlimited number of, of free individuals and, and lock them down to only one room. So we created a chef chat room, and that shared out to, the, to all of Adobe, and we published it again on the wiki. And people can just request access to that one room, and we can 
go crazy in that room, essentially. Um, and then the rest of the, the Slack uh, chat is still isolated away from those people. That's cool. And what about getting knowledge from the broader community? You know, there's uh, certainly Chef as uh, uh, an entity on Twitter sent out a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff going on on our blog. Uh, and, of course, we have a very vibrant community that's always, you know, publishing, releasing podcasts, publishing blog posts, having conversations on Twitter and IRC and so forth. Do you have any uh, techniques for bringing those uh, sort of external resources into Adobe and sharing them with your company? with your guild? Uh, what we have tried to do is, is take highlights and uh, even things like chef newsletters and reference those in the wiki. Um, that's a little more cumbersome than I'd like, but I think it does help because it gives me regular content. Uh, and actually, I can't take all the credit. Naomi updates that wiki more than I do, I think. But uh, having taking whatever I see out there and, and kind of reposting it on the wiki keeps content fresh, gives people a reason to come back to it, and uh, at least they know where to look for, for some more sources and kind of see the names, see the guys who are writing regular blog posts about Chef and uh, know where to where to find, like, the IRC channels. You can also use the basic Slack bot or whatever chat bot to automatically post all blog postings from the Chef IO blog as announcements into the channel. So. Again, that central source has multiple uh, sources of content, and when people come back, they don't have to go to the blog, and there's some that they come either to the wiki or to Slack and see what's fresh in one or two spots. It's cool, and it sounds like you you know you've got clearly lots of resources for folks that know about Chef and folks that are interested in Chef. But there must be other pockets within Adobe who haven't heard of Chef, don't really know much about it who could benefit from what Chef has to offer. So uh, what what sort of techniques do you use, Jeremy, to um, to sort of bring Chef to their attention? Well, we, we still use a lot of email and, you know, new projects come up like uh, WebOps um, as a team. We actually support a lot of different applications. The primary ones that we support or the ones that people know about and see are like the www site. But there's a bunch of other stuff that we support. So projects are coming into our team for support constantly, and they go to the main um, DL for the team, and someone on the team will get assigned to work with that client. Um, I will see those emails, and I'll inject Chef solutions into that. You know, you could do this with Chef. It will be a lot faster. Oh, we already have a solution for what you're trying to do there. Um, you know, if you need help, let, you know, let me know. You know, some of those, you know, that sometimes works. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's where, you know, you need to have that have that community and be able to have, you know, a certain amount of feedback and, you know, demos and be able to prove that, you know, yes, I actually have a solution that's going to save you time instead of just, you know, being someone that's constantly injecting, you know, fancy ideas into, you know, conversations. So, it works and it doesn't, but I think it's moving us in the you know in the in the right direction. Um, people need to know about stuff b before they can ask for it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what about some other things that you might do outside of Adobe? I'm sure that you go to uh, conferences and meetups, um, maybe DevOps days or Chef Comp, things like that. Uh, what? How do you bring learnings and knowledge from those things back into Adobe? Well, within our within our own group, as we go to conferences, after we come back from those conferences, we do have, you know, basic debriefings on all of that. Um, I've personally learned a lot going to ChefConf and going to Velocity, having my eyes open to, you know, things that a bunch of other teams are doing and, you know, trying to apply that to what we're do, do, doing. Sometimes that's been a bit of a challenge to try to map, um, you know, things that, you know, younger companies with less technical debt do onto the stuff that we have, some of which are, you know, 10 years old and running on Solaris. Um, so that's kind of tricky. Um, the airing of grievances stuff, the idea of having, you know, um, actionable complaints actually came out of a talk from uh, – 
I think it was James Turnbull at Velocity a few years ago, and he talked about the culture of DevOps and how ops people like to complain about everything, but, you know, you need to be able to act on those complaints. So, you know, yeah, everyone around here complains. People complain about stuff all the time. But you need to be able to drill into that, find out what you can solve, and move forward on that. So, you know, that kind of stuff, those kinds of cultural things, being able to bring them back into our group so we don't become, you know, very stagnant and isolated is, you know, very useful. Um, one more thing I, I have done, which I'm not super proud of, is actually hijack other distribution lists and plug the Chef DL every once in a while when I can squeeze it in. Uh, for example, there's, there are security discussion mailing lists, and every once in a while when, when the opportunity arises about patching systems, I like to throw a little Chef conversation in there and redirect people back to the, the Chef Guild site. That's awesome. And talk to us a little bit about how widely distributed Adobe is. Where where do you have teams that you need participating in these conversations around the world? Uh, we we're basically global. Um, India, Hamburg, Romania, uh, across the U.S. Um, I think we have offices in Asia as well. Web offices um, in. India, California, and Utah. Yeah. So we basically have someone up and working 24 hours a day. Uh, so it's really interesting trying to coordinate and answer questions uh, with with some of the teams in India. I just got an email this morning, actually. Somebody had a, uh, trouble with a uh, chef cookbook, and he needed a little help. And I replied to him, and apparently it's the middle of the night for him, and I didn't realize that. But he did reply, reply back telling me that he would get it. He would try my solution in the morning. Um, but sometimes you just forget that these people aren't always in your time zone or or even in the same part of the world as you are. Uh, talking about distributed teams, uh, we have a question from um, one of the viewers. They asked, does Adobe have a centralized deployment process for Chef Cookbooks, or is the Adobe community enabled to uh, enabled more focused on enabling each team to create and manage their own processes. For Adobe IT, we do have a uh, supported uh, central Chef 11 enterprise ser server. Um, other teams do have their own processes. Manny has uh, B, uh, the, uh, B, the uh, Behance team has their own process. Uh, the cloud operations side, um, they use Hosted Chef. So realistically, it depends on where you are in the uh, in the uh, company. Different teams are empowered to handle Chef as they um, as they want to, you know, as it works best for for them. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the the biggest wins we got. Um, the team who is providing the Slack channel. Um, is actually the same team who helped us coordinate uh, an agreement with Chef where all of Adobe would benefit. Um, so everyone has access to run their own uh, private Chef server internally. They can spin it up, they can manage it however they want, and they also have access to certain hosted Chef resources if they need to. Uh, this kind of let everybody do what's best for their team or their product and not be forced into a workflow that might not agree with them. You know, and while we still heavily encourage everyone sharing cookbooks and sharing knowledge, we don't want to break their workflow and, and make things more difficult for them um, in the interest of just making them share. Thanks, guys. Let's see. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So there was another question here. Um, how about other other teams with already existing software and processes? Uh, have you and your teams received resistance on adopting the Chef method? And if so, sort of how do you how do you respond to that resistance? What do you do to help with that? So in IT, we do run into that problem. Um, I'm not sure how much cross you know cross functional um, operations there are with the with the Behance site 
side of things, but you know, having a older IT model where everything is still siloed in many ways, we do we do end up you know needing to deal with with other teams that aren't quite as automated as we'd like. Um, you know, we've we in WebOps have uh, automated some stuff with Chef. Uh, we do have ongoing conversations with other teams that we're dependent on about how we can, you know, make their stuff a little bit faster or um, how we can hook into it so we don't have to wait for them to, you know, address a ticket because it doesn't matter in a way if I can build my application on top of a server in five minutes if I have to wait, you know, three days for a ticket to get resolved. Um, we did in a way, uh, have 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 a little bit of help with uh, with this um, a couple of years ago with a reorg. Uh, part of WebOps got split off into another um, organization, so we had already started building processes by which people could submit changes into our uh, cookbooks by way of pull requests in GitHub, and we'd already trained. Um, our team members on that, so now we had this other cross-functional team that already was hooked into the process, and we already uh, trusted them. So that's that's really you know kept the administrative load on you know interacting with other people and getting their changes in a lot um, a lot faster. Um, that's great. So it seems like. Uh, you all have had some really great success around bringing together a community of interests, really enforcing or uh, encouraging that peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, um, introducing Chef to more and more people within your organization. All of this is great. And it sounds like it went just uh, just swimmingly and according, according to the plan that you set out at the very beginning. So I'd just love if we could... Uh, if you could take a minute and think back, uh, what are some of the key lessons that you've learned? What are some of the things that you would have done differently or, or thought differently as you started on this journey? Uh, I think the one big lesson for me was um, I kind of wish I had started off being more open about the whole process and more public about where we were and setting things up. Uh, well, when we first engaged Chef and we're trying to figure out what the relationship was going to be between us and Chef, uh, we kind of had a trouble board for discussing and planning and some other stuff, but we didn't really engage the community uh, right away. We didn't go back to them and say, okay, this is what's going on. We didn't give them feedback. I kind of wish we had just opened up that Trello board and made it public, made all like the documents public, and just said, okay, this is what's going on. This is a discussion. Welcome. Join the conversation. Give us feedback. You know, what would give you value, and what do you guys want to see from, from Chef or from us as a community? How about my side? What is the oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jeremy. So we, you know, the the journey that we had with uh, with Chef was, um, you know, a little different than than other teams. Um, in IT, we were kind of told that we had to use Chef because someone had purchased it, and you know, you tell ops people that they have to use a particular tool, and they get a little cranky about it. Um, that's kind of how we started with the airing of grievances meeting, just, you know, showing up, let's hear all of your complaints about this, let's address them, let's get you more comfortable with the tool. I think if we had, you know, going back and really, um, uh, you know, how we would have done things differently to drive things a little bit better to, you know, and gotten a little bit farther than where we are right now is, I think I would have really tried to get, you know, management and everyone to commit a little more wholeheartedly into it at the beginning. Um, you know, we did commit for a couple of apps and we moved forward, but we didn't, you know, really just jump in and, you know, kind of a sink or swim kind of thing. And I think that would have, that would have helped a, a lot more, um, you know, but there's a, there's a problem with the, you know, with the newness of it and the learning curve. And um, you know, getting everyone up to speed and being able to just power through through it all. Uh, one problem which we do have, which I'm still struggling with, how to really address long term is, Chef has the ability once you get the cookbooks built and you get the tools built, it has the ability to make things really really easy. 
And so when you make things easy and you hide the complexity, people don't learn as much as they should. So, you know, there's a lot of people on, um, on our team who can make basic changes to cookbooks, but they've never had to build any of the more complicated things. So the learning kind of stopped like right there. And I'm not sure how to really push things past that. And, um, you know, if we had found a way to do that at the beginning, I think that would have, you know, really, really helped with our um, growth as a team. All right, I'm going to chime in as well here that this, as you're building up your community or your guild or your tribe, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's not going to be a, a sprint. This is a process that's been going on for quite a while, uh, and you'll still constantly find new people and be warm and receptive to them and say, oh, you didn't know about us. Awesome. Here's how they contact us. If it's just one um, wiki page like they focused on, everything is there. There you'll learn that there's email and Slack and everything. So don't just overwhelm somebody. Um, say, Go to this one page, here's everything you need to know. Not say, hey, join email, just join Slack. And those be like, that's too much, I'm not going to do that stuff. Uh, so it takes a while. You'll always find new people. Either new people join the company and they want to start using Chef or they just didn't know. There's all sorts of people in various situations throughout large enterprises. And find them um, and welcome them and learn from them as well. Uh, they'll always tell something to show you, even if they're new to the group and uh, go for that. Yeah, that's really great. I think that, um, you know, as you as you start to build a community, uh, it's absolutely an organic process. There's no uh, prescribed roadmap that you can just march down and expect to have the same results that uh, someone else had at some other company or within some other community. So I think it is really important that what you do is you, you start small with the people that are really passionate and really care about the particular thing of interest. You, you amplify the success and the, the learnings and the achievements and accomplishments of that smaller team. And as you do so, you really look to bring in others, welcome others into that fold, and bring, um, bring those people uh, into your community of interest, uh, and then just sort of repeat that process. Introduce tools as you need them. Uh, you, you will not build a community on tools alone. It's absolutely the tools and the people that have to go together. All right, well, listen, uh, this has been a really great conversation today. I want to thank uh, everyone, especially Jeremy and Manny, for coming on and sharing uh, with us and with the broader community, some of the success uh, and process that you're having there at Adobe. Thank you. Absolutely. And for those of you that are watching the live webinar, uh, just a reminder that this uh, will be uh, recorded and a recording will be made available at the link that you're currently watching this right now. We do have a number of awesome chef events coming up soon, maybe in an area near you. I would encourage you to go to chef.io slash events. There you will find out uh, information about meetups that are happening in your area, local pop-up events that are happening that you might want to join, as well as training opportunities. And then, of course, as always, reach out. Reach out to uh, your account manager, your customer account manager, your friends at Chef for help and guidance and assistance with building a community, both within your organization and in participating with the larger chef community. Thanks again for tuning in today, and we'll see you soon on another webinar.